home by myself. Amy and Oliver get back on Monday, so uh, looking forward to that. Um, just gonna be working today. Need to get a lot done for the launch on Monday. So things like the drift, setting up the program pages, ooh, a workout, I have to eat, and then do onboarding work. Um, make sure week one we're ready to go, which isn't until March, but it's just good to have things lined up. Uh, prepare the event decks for week eight, as well as some emails, do some G-lock testing, which I've been putting off because I don't know how to do it yet. Um, so yeah, just gonna be busy with work and then gonna try to catch dinner with the family later tonight. I wanted to talk through how I think about networking. Um, networking whenever I go to a city, whether I'm working or not working. When going into a new city, I like to make sure, I like to try to see as many people as possible because I think that you can do a lot to build a relationship online and you can do a lot over social media, over email, over the newsletters, and it's great to keep in touch with people that way. However, there's nothing more powerful than spending time and either getting a coffee, getting a meal, even better, doing something social together. And even more important than what you actually do, whether it's coffee, meal, etc., is the fact that you take an effort to remember that, oh, this is a person that I want to meet and I want to stay in touch with. I think there's something psychologically powerful about another person reaching out to you and saying, hey, like, would love to spend some time with you. So this works, obviously, if you already have um, somewhat of a connection. It can be very loose, but um, it, it's not like a complete stranger who is, for example, starting out in Hollywood, reaching out to an executive and saying, hey, would love to meet and get to know you better, right? Like that, that's not what I'm talking about. That doesn't work. That just feels weird um, and not what I recommend. But when two people are of equal status in the industry that they're at and they have a, a mutual connection that says, hey, both you guys are pretty cool, there is something powerful about that person reaching out and saying like, hey, I think you're interesting. I think you're cool enough. I think I could learn something from you and would love to connect at some point. And so um, being the one to forfeit their ego and put yourself out there to say, hey, would love to meet up, would love to see you, or um, I haven't seen you in a long time, would love to see you again. Like and there's something just so powerful about that and it really uh, can cement a relationship even though you may not spend a lot of quality time together, the fact that you make the effort to um, reach out to them is, is just super powerful. So um, I highly recommend it. I think it's a shortcut to tens of thousands of, e tens of, thousands of emails and uh, a million Facebook likes. Uh, 100 Facebook messages, right? Just that, that in-person time. So um, that's why it's so important. Now, the next thing is how do you go about and, and create structure so that you can find the time to uh, meet up with these people? Um, so my kind of process is I'm just gonna take um, when I need to see people, when I go to San Francisco and um, I want to try to see as many people in between work as I can. So the work starts like about a month beforehand or even before that. So even before a month before I know this trip is out. So let's say I'm going on a trip in, uh, let's just call it March to keep things simple. So March 1st, I know I'm gonna be in San Francisco. By January, I will have made sure that I have a list of all the people in San Francisco that I think are interesting and at some point I would like to connect with. This can be people that I worked with in the past people I'm currently working with, uh, friends who have moved over there, and family members, right? So like four general buckets. And I'll keep that all in the list. It doesn't matter where you keep the list. It can be in uh, notes, it can be in Evernote, it could be an email to yourself. Um, I know there are a lot of different systems for this, so here are a few. Um, I, keep a, I keep a note and I, just on my phone, and there I just write names as I think of them throughout the day while I'm taking a shower, while I'm driving, right? Like, oh, uh, I forgot that um, Jeff moved to San Francisco recently. Let me just write that down so that I remember to um, add him to a, a list. Um, I use Evernote and I just keep an ongoing list of people who are in San Francisco that I, want, that I would want to meet at some point. Um, I know other people who keep a uh, email tag. So in Gmail, they create a tag, uh, cities, 
San Francisco. And anytime someone emails them from that city saying, hey, like if you're ever in town, would love to meet up, they just add that tag and then they can go back and look at it afterwards and be like, oh, okay, here are all the people who said they would wanna meet while I'm in San Francisco. Um, these three look interesting. I'll make sure I hit them up before I go on the, the trip. So that is like uh, two months out, further, as far out as you can get, right? It just, you wanna be always prepared. You always wanna be like 80% prepared and that's how you, how you do it. So that when you get to one month before the trip, so now we're looking at February 1st, you are, you've already done 80% of the work, right? It's very easy because everything's already there for you. So uh, February 1st, one month before the trip, I, I prioritize the top seven to 10 people that I would like to hopefully connect with on this current trip. Now that seven to 10 is gonna fluctuate depending on how long your trip is, how much work you think you need to do, and uh, how many people you reasonably think you can, you can squeeze in. I always aim to do a little bit more than I think that I'm gonna be able to do just because I know that uh, for some people, the scheduling is not gonna work. Some people are gonna cancel. Um, and uh, it's just good to have more people than less. Uh, this is something I kind of learned from uh, the Hollywood game, specifically a assistant, or she was an assistant, and today she is a, uh, she's an executive at, I can't remember, but her name was Meredith. Um, and she would, when, when her boss lost his job, she went on a spree of networking where she booked, um, a breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day for almost a month. And when we asked her like, oh, how are you going to be able to do all these? She says, no, no, no. I already know that half these people are going to cancel on me. So really it's not going to be a, a, a breakfast, lunch, dinner, and drinks. It's only, it's only gonna be one drink, one lunch, right? And she's just kind of planning ahead knowing that people are gonna cancel on her. Cause not that people are malicious, but that's just kind of how it goes, right? It's a numbers game. So um, to go back, you have your seven to 10 people. I prioritize them in terms of who are the people that I uh, either most just want to see socially cause I, I, I enjoy our relationship or people that, um, are totally brand new to me and I think they're doing interesting things and I would love to learn more about them. So I just set up a prioritized list and then I start emailing, hey, um, gonna be in town these days, would love to connect. Uh, if you are available, let me know. I'll, I will send over dates. Um, I will do, I'll do the work, I will find a venue, I will send over the dates, I will schedule the time, right? That's a bad email, I'm not gonna say all that, but that's the general gist of it. You want to take the onus of work away from that person and make it super easy for you guys to connect. Uh, so a better email may be something like, hey, um, hope you're well. Um, I'm actually going to be in town uh, March 1st to March 7th. Would love to connect if you're available. Um, let me know your general avail and uh, I'll send over a couple of dates. Um, I'll send over a couple of dates and times and hopefully we can find something that's convenient for you. So that's the email, very simple. And now I have a, uh, and then I'll, sorry, then I will email maybe another three or four of those people on those lists and try to sort of like juggle them into my schedule. So now I'm a month ahead, I've already got emails out to a few people and I'm trying to slot them in. And so during the rest of the month, you're just playing like schedule Tetris, trying to fit people in, into your schedule, into their schedules. And as people get locked in, you can decide, okay, let me keep working down this list and trying to get them scheduled in here. Um, so then the week of, let's say you're in the town, you're in town now. And um, the next thing is just to make sure you confirm, um, you confirm that they're good. You lock down venues, like venues don't have to be locked down until uh, the week of, but maybe you just want to check to see where the other person's coming from. And that way you can pick some place that's convenient for them, but also not too convenient for you. Um, you have to be realistic. For example, if someone was coming from Palo Alto and they asked me if I could come out when I was in San Francisco, and I would have loved to have met them halfway. I would have loved to have meet, met them in uh, Palo Alto, but just, I know I knew my schedule and it just wasn't gonna happen. So if we couldn't meet in San Francisco, then if that one, uh, that particular meeting fell through and that's okay. Like just next time I go into San Francisco, they're at the top of the list and I make sure I, I hit them. A um, couple other logistical things, uh, whenever possible, 
if you are comfortable doing drinks and meeting other people, uh, try to do a group drink. So this could be like uh, new coworkers, old coworkers. This could be um, different like Facebook groups that maybe you're a part of. Just having different groups that you can organize and create a group drinks thing so that you can knock out uh, a bunch of people and meet a bunch of people all in one shot. Uh, it requires a certain uh, social skill set to be able to navigate something like that and to be able to do that. Uh, I used to think I could do that and I really couldn't. Now I've gotten better over time, uh, but it's something that you, it is a skill you need to develop. And if you're comfortable with it, it's, a, it's an amazing way to go. Uh, and finally, follow up. So let's say you do all these meetings. Um, you make sh What I like to do is I like to take notes afterwards on every single one. Um, I store it in Evernote, I store it in their contacts, just so that I have like even a few small details about what we talked about. And that way the next time we meet, which may be a year, two years later, um, I'll remember what we had chatted about. Um, I follow up with anything that I said I was gonna follow up on. I ask them if there's anything I can do to help them in the future, please let me know. And uh, that's kind of how I close the loop on, on that particular uh, meeting. And finally, one who I did not get a chance to meet, they go to the top of this prioritized list and I make sure that I'm going to get in touch with them then. The thing I like to do is I like to make sure I get a picture with the person and then I post it to Instagram, Facebook, um, IG stories, whatever. Uh, and that way we just have like a memory of that this happened and uh, we actually managed to get together. Um, so anyways, this is kind of how I think about tactically scheduling everyone. Um, it's led to being able to maintain a lot of good relationships in, um, in different cities wherever I go, whether it's San Francisco or Los Angeles, getting to meet up with um, old coworkers, getting to meet up with like my old writing group and maintaining that relationship. Um, it takes a lot of work. Like there's just no way around it. You have to, it takes a lot of light work. Um, I'll, I'll be like busy with work and I'll spend an hour just trying to play this schedule Tetris and get everyone in. Um, but ultimately I think, like I said before, your network is your net worth and you just have to put time into it and you have to continue to do, to develop those relationships. So that's how I think about it. Hopefully that was, uh, hopefully that was helpful.